Blue Zoo TV, presented by Akari, featuring Fluval. Today, we're in Boston to check out the New England Aquarium. Let's go inside. The New England Aquarium in downtown Boston is located on the Central Wharf overlooking the Boston Harbor. First opened to the public in 1969, the aquarium has expanded to include a giant ocean tank, an IMAX theater, jellyfish, turtles, a touch tank, and penguins. It has thousands of fish on display from seahorses to a schooling fish exhibit. And our timing here couldn't be any better. We're here at the behind the scenes with the goosefish with Carolyn. Carolyn, our timing is perfect because we got here at a really cool time. Explain why. It is. It's a really exciting time. Our goosefish, our display goosefish, just laid a large egg veil. Um, it just happened this morning. This is her second one of the season. Um, she has in the past laid three each year. So you guys are really lucky. This doesn't happen very often. Um, and it's just a beautiful sight to see. So the egg veil looks like it has a lot of eggs. What is a typical number for eggs with the goosefish? It would be very difficult to count, uh, but I, there have been estimates that there are over a million eggs in an egg veil. Over a million? Over a million. Some dad's got a lot of work to do. Yes, yes. I know, that poor goosefish. So are, are goosefish known as any other type of fish for people that might not be familiar with goosefish? They are, yeah. They're a common fisheries fish that you'll get at a fish store, but they'd be more likely to be ordered under monkfish. Monkfish. Yep. Kind of a lazy man's lobster, I think they've called it, or a poor man's lobster. So how long has she been here? Uh, we've had this goosefish, I believe, between three and five years. Um, she's been with us for a while. She's been pretty consistent, as I said, laying about three egg veils a year. She's just an amazing display animal. I really love working with her. So we appreciate you having the goosefish hold up until we got here to videotape. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. <laughs> We're with Scott Dowd here in front of the Amazon exhibit. Scott, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming out. Explain, because I love the fish and the colors, what this whole exhibit represents. Um, this exhibit is representing a, a, a backwater in the Amazon, a Igarape, or stream. We have uh, three large anacondas in the display, but lots, also lots of small Amazonian fish, and uh, lots of fish that are very popular in the aquarium hobby, including the Cardinal Tetra. So you've got something, a project, that is very close, near and dear to your heart, that you've been championing for a long time. Explain mm -hmm. a little bit about it. Um, more than 20 years ago, we started going down and visiting an area in the Amazon where a lot of aquarium fish come from. And what we discovered there was that the aquarium hobby, the aquarium trade, is extremely important to this region of the Amazon. Um, a lot of the fish are captured from the wild and they're exported globally for the, the home aquarium trade. But what that represents to the people that live there is a basis of, of livelihoods. It's, it's a source of cash income. And in fact, the trade represents about 60% of the, of the cash that comes into the region. And because it's so important to the, to the residents economically, they uh, protect the whole ecosystem. They protect the whole Amazon environment because the fish are so important to them. So this is an example of where the aquarium hobby uh, results in a win-win situation. It, it protects the environment and it helps the people. So the project in itself covers that whole entire scope? The project is called Project Piaba. The local word uh, in the Amazon for minnow or small fish is Piaba. And so we're looking at um, all aspects of the trade and we want to help that particular fishery remain competitive in the, the global market. We want to maximize the economic returns to the region because that's the driver of environmental protectionism. We're doing things like having fish health specialists work with us to develop best handling practices for the fish so the fish come out in the best condition and the, the most uh, the most competitive in the trade. We're also working on, on marketing to help hobbyists understand that if they buy uh, some of these fish, 
um, they're actually helping the environment. And we have a slogan, um, buy a fish, save a tree, meaning that if you buy some of the aquarium fish that come from this region in the Amazon, you end up protecting uh, the forest as well. So in a nutshell, basically taking or removing some of these fish from their environment is really helping the people survive down there. It is. It's the benefits of the hobby in this re region are huge. It's humanitarian. It's uh, alleviating poverty in an area where there's limited um, opportunities for livelihoods and, and work. Um, again, it's, it's helping the environment, not just uh, the fish that are captured for the aquarium fish trade, but that whole tropical forest ecosystem. The jaguars, the parrots, the monkeys, the river dolphins that live there all benefit by the protection of the fishing communities. There is a lot of carbon locked up in that tropical forest um, in the area where the fishing takes place and all of that carbon would otherwise end up in the atmosphere. The tropical forest filters a lot of atmospheric uh, pollutants uh, that are contributing to the greenhouse effect. So our humble little aquarium hobby is solving some of our, the, the major global challenges of, of poverty, preservation of areas of biological importance, and even stabilizing the climate. So people can find out a lot more about it by visiting the New England Aquarium website and Project Piava. Projectpiava.org and uh, Project Piava is on Facebook as well. Scott, thank you very much. Thank you. So that wraps up day one at the New England Aquarium. Frank, Blue Zoo Frank, TV Frank. presented by... Her we can't let hey, you go. Scott. Can't and, let you go just Scott, yet. <laughs> we promise you one more thing before you go. I hope it's good. It's really good. Before you go, you've got a pet, a, a very special fish here. So just just give him a little pet on the head before you before you go. It's an electric eel. You notice that? It's a tradition. Be part of the club. You can do it. Um, let me guess. His name is Sparky. Sparky's his name. Are you serious? I'm serious. Go ahead. Reach right in and pet him on the head. Oh, you know what? <laughs> We're not coming back for day two. <laughs> Should we do another take? Blue Zoo TV is presented by Hikari, making species-specific diets long before it was fashionable, because at Hikari, we know it matters. And featuring Fluval, discover life below water with Fluval. Blue Zoo is proudly partnered with Carib Sea, bringing science to life, nature protected, Nature perfected with Carib Sea. To email the show, go to bluezootv.com and follow us on Twitter at bluezootv.